Okay, today's movie is Kiss Me Deadly, the 1955 film noir thriller directed by Robert Aldrich from a script by A.I. Bezzarides, based on the novel by Mickey Spillane. The film stars Ralph Meeker, Albert Decker, Paul Stewart and Gabby Rogers. When hard-bitten private detective Mike Hammer picks up a desperate woman fleeing down the highway dressed in only a trench coat, he is drawn into a deep and murky mystery. After they are run off the road and the woman is murdered, Mike begins to trace a convoluted web of clues, linking other murders to a mysterious and very valuable object some very dangerous people are prepared to kill for. With the threats to his own life and those of the people around him mounting, as well as the body count, Mike refuses to give up the trail, regardless of the cost and of the warnings of police and gangsters alike. As Mike draws ever closer to the truth, he has no idea of the shattering, apocalyptic climax that is awaiting him. Wow, this film is as noir as noir can be. It is gritty, dark and edgy, to the point of crossing over into the realms of horror, both psychological and physical. For a film from 1955, Kiss Me Deadly really pushes the limits of nihilism, violence and grittiness. This is a film where not only the thugs, but also the anti-hero, Mike Hammer, seem more than a little sadistic and very, very volatile. Ralph Meeker is compelling as Mike. He's no nice guy, but a tough guy in a very tough world where no one can be trusted. Everyone has some hustle going on here, and Mike even uses his own girlfriend as bait in the matrimonial investigations he undertakes, as well as the current case he's working on, regardless of how uncomfortable she feels about it. Mike prowls through this savage world using brute force to get what he needs or to save his own neck. Ralph Meeker seems to tower over a cast of weirdly tiny actors, which only adds menace to his physical presence. Everyone in this film seems soiled and dirtied by the world. With the exception of the gangster's sister and the nightclub singer, there is no femme fatale glamour in this movie. The women in this film are all scrawny, sweaty, dishevelled, and are more often dressed in dirty bathrobes and trench coats than any nice kind of dress. This is not a high-class world of fancy nightclubs and elegance, but a low-rent world of cheap rooming houses, greasy garages, and interestingly, it's also a very diverse and multicultural world, as opposed to the predominantly white Anglo cast we've seen in the other um, film noirs I've covered on this channel. In this way, it actually seems a lot more realistic, and I actually enjoyed seeing much more diversity in a Hollywood film of this period. It's also a world in which all of the characters, even the most minor ones, seem edgy, grumpy and cynical. And I felt this adds a startling note of emotional realism to the film. And one of Kiss Me Deadly's most impressive assets is its incredible cast. Most of these character actors are very familiar faces and all of them deliver solid and impressive performances. Every character in this film, even the smallest ones, are distinctive, memorable and interesting, which is no mean feat in a cast of this size and a real testament to the quality of the writing here. Kiss Me Deadly takes us on a fast-paced and exhilarating ride from the lonely back roads to the alleys, back streets and apartment buildings of Los Angeles. And if you love seeing vintage location shooting and vintage cars, the film delivers on that front too. The action is constantly moving and as restless as the film's anti-hero. And can we just take a minute to appreciate Mike's incredible cars? I also love seeing the shots filmed from inside the car as Mike is actually driving. This film has a sense of immediacy and urgency about it which make it totally gripping and absorbing. I was actually feeling a bit sick when I started watching this film and the film totally took my mind off it which is sometimes exactly what you want from a film. Although as an escape from reality, Kiss Me Deadly is a grim one. Ernest Laszlo's moody and shadowy cinematography lends a dark elegance to this story about rough and desperate people in the dog-eat-dog -dog world. Now we could talk about the brilliant Cloris Leachman making a stunning debut in this film. We could talk about the film's murky moral landscape or the sense of Cold War terror that it evokes. 
or about the shadows of World War II and Hiroshima that hang over it so heavily. But really, all I want to say about Kiss Me Deadly is watch it. Watch it and be amazed by it. This is a very high stakes thriller that keeps raising the stakes relentlessly while keeping us on the edge of our seats guessing at what will happen next. It is a gripping and thrilling drama with a climax like no other. The stakes can't get any higher than Apocalypse and in this way the film actually crosses over the borders from film noir into horror and even into the realms of nihilistic science fiction and what an electrifying intersection of genres that is. If you enjoy film noir, if you enjoy films that are gritty, edgy and dangerous, Kiss Me Deadly is completely deserving of its reputation as a classic in this genre. Perhaps it's no surprise that Kiss Me Deadly presses on our horror nerves so effectively considering that director Robert Aldrich would go on to direct Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. But his ability to evoke body horror, psychological horror, even a nihilistic existential horror really lifts this film out of the realm of ordinary film noir and into a much more dangerous and therefore exciting realm. To sum up, I would say just see it. And if you've already seen it, why not enjoy it again? Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.